I'm one of those proverbial rocket scientists that I've dealt with such edgy topics as gravity control, space drives, and faster than light travel. Throttle back, take us out of warp. Even if it's impossible, it's worth working at it because of what you learn in the process. But you take a chunk of space time and move it faster than space time. The vehicle inside that bubble thinks that it's not moving at all. It's the space time that's moving. Space time is actually expanding behind it and contracting in front of it and moving along. Look at the Big Bang theories and the early expansion of the universe. It does appear that space time expanded faster than light. So if we could do it for the Big Bang, why not for our space drives? You've got the idea of wormholes. There's a shortcut through space time. I really like the infinite and probability drive. You are about to feel some initial ill effects as you have been rescued from certain death at an improbability level of 2 to the power of 2 power. We've been picked up by a ship with a new infinite improbability drive. I mean, this is, this is incredible, Arthur. Where when you turn it on, you know, it's infinitely improbable that you're everywhere at once. And when you turn it off, you recoalesce someplace with interesting side effects. Get a, a, a tub of clean water or a sink, put anything in it that floats. Just touch behind that object a little bit of detergent and that object will dash away. Now that object didn't have any propellers, it didn't have any sails or whatever, but what you did is you changed the water, which then in turn pushed on this boat. So if we find some way to alter the properties of space-time, will then space-time push on the craft and move it? Don't trap yourselves in, I'm going to make a jump to light speed. The biggest barriers to the faster than the light schemes that exist now, they require enormous amounts of energy. The real potential showstopper is you might be creating time travel paradoxes. You might actually arrive back from your trip before you leave to stop yourself from taking the trip, in which case you wouldn't have been there to stop yourself. Well, so you get into confusing things. Almost at once there followed the discovery of hyperdrive through which the speed of light was first attained and later greatly surpassed. If you think about trying to achieve practical interstellar flight, the ability to be able to go places where we've never been, to protect ourselves against doomsday asteroids, to discover ways of helping repair environmental damage, to give us the means to leave the planet if we have to. If we don't start working on them when we can, by the time we discover that we might have to, it might be too late. I thought, hey, by the time I grow up, you know, moon bases will be there. And then Star Trek came along, and that was interesting. I think, you know, by the time I grow up, they're probably going to be wondering how to make that real, which is why I started to get into this. Little did I realize how things uh, got held back. But the other thing I liked about Star Trek is that the crew behaved handsomely. They were people with differences working together without all the petty bickering to solve problems. And that I really liked the new Star Trek movie is getting back to that idea of people trying to do admirable things working together rather than against each other. So that's the part of the fiction and perhaps, I don't know, maybe that's more of the science fiction stretch than achieving a breakthrough spaceflight. Um, but I was inspired by that too.